Hi there. At the end of our previous lesson, I asked you to arrange the metals that we've used so far in our investigation of chemical reactions into a list, from most reactive to least reactive. Did you give it a try? The most reactive metals that we've investigated are the alkali metals that we find in group 1 on the periodic table, followed by the group 2 or alkali earth metals. Do you remember most of the metals that we investigated from these groups reacted spontaneously with oxygen and have to be stored in paraffin in airless containers? From the results of our experiments, we saw that in both these groups, the reactivity increased down the group. So we can arrange these metals in a reactivity series like this. Potassium, sodium, lithium, calcium, magnesium, iron, and copper. So far, we have developed our reactivity series by looking at how vigorously metals react with non-metallic substances like oxygen and water. Let's have a closer look at how metals react with water. Can you see that the metal has kicked out or displaced hydrogen from the water molecule to form hydrogen gas? This is an example of a displacement reaction. As we found out in our previous lessons, not all metals are reactive enough to do this because the bonds between hydrogen and oxygen in a water molecule are very strong. For less reactive metals, we need another source of hydrogen to continue our reactivity series. And hydrogen chloride that we find in hydrochloric acid is an ideal example to use. We have not discussed acids in this or our previous series, so a little bit of background knowledge is important. Acids can be either strong or weak. An example of a weak acid is vinegar. Vinegar has two scientific names, acetic acid or ethanoic acid. There are three strong acids that are commonly used in chemical experiments, and you may have heard of them before. Hydrochloric acid that has a chemical formula of HCl, sulfuric acid or H2SO4, and nitric acid with the chemical formula HNO3. This is what we would like to achieve in today's lesson. By the end of this lesson, you should be able to describe the reactions of metals with acids, write balanced chemical equations for the reactions that we see. For the experiments in this lesson, we will be using diluted hydrochloric acid. Let me show you how we dilute an acid. For this, we will need a beaker with some water. A small amount of hydrochloric acid needs to be poured slowly into a beaker of water. And then mix thoroughly. Always add acid to water and never water to acid. Remember that you have to take great care when working with acids. They are dangerous and can cause burning or even contribute to explosions if they aren't handled properly. I'm going to be using the metals iron, zinc, copper and lead in our experiments today. Do you notice that we will be using two new metals, zinc and lead, that we will have to add to our reactivity series? Before we begin, let me take out the apparatus that we are going to be using. First, I'm going to half full four test tubes with dilute hydrochloric acid. And then I drop a piece of metal in each tube. I 
I have labeled the tubes for easy identification. We will also test for any gas produced by these reactions. Take a closer look so that we can write down our observations. In test tube 1, I placed some lead. Because the reaction is happening so slowly, there's too little gas to test. In test tube 2, we have an iron nail. Can you see that a stream of bubbles is produced? In test tube 3, we see quite vigorous reactions. The zinc is reacting faster than any of the other metals. As you could have guessed, there's no reaction taking place in the tube containing the copper. If we test the gas in these test tubes, we can confirm that the gas is hydrogen. OK, let's write down our observations. Iron and zinc both produced bubbles of hydrogen gas. Copper didn't produce any reaction and lead produced small bubbles of hydrogen gas in a slow reaction. So we can say that iron, zinc and lead all displaced hydrogen from the acid, but copper did not. So copper is even less reactive than hydrogen. Where would we start if we had to write chemical equations for all of these reactions? We know that we have a metal and acid as our reactants. We also know that hydrogen gas is the one product. Is there another and what would that be? When a metal reacts with an acid, it forms a metal salt. Now that we know what the other product is, we can write the balanced equations for the reactions that we saw. We start by completing the word equation we discovered. Metal plus acid will give us a metal salt plus hydrogen gas. We are now ready to replace the words with the chemical formulae. We'll start with the reaction that took place in test tube 1, iron and an acid. The symbol for iron is Fe. The acid that we are using is hydrochloric acid or HCl. We also know that hydrogen, like oxygen, occurs as a diatomic molecule. So the formula for hydrogen gas is H2G. Remember to put a G in subscript to indicate that we are talking about a gas. Whatever is left from our reactants after we remove the hydrogen must form the metal salt. In this case, iron and the chloride of the acid. The formula for iron 2 chloride is Fe. Cl2. Now that all the symbols and formulae are in place, the equation must be balanced. Do you notice that we have only one chlorine atom and one hydrogen atom as reactants, but two in the product? By adding another hydrochloric acid particle to the left of the equation, the equation is balanced. We also saw reactions between lead and zinc with hydrochloric acid. If I told you that all the metals form ions with a charge of 2 plus, could you write these equations on your own? Write the balanced equations for zinc and hydrochloric acid and lead and hydrochloric acid.
Here are the completed balanced chemical equations. Compare yours to mine. Zinc plus hydrochloric acid will give you zinc chloride plus hydrogen gas. Lead plus hydrochloric acid will give you lead chloride plus hydrogen gas. Now for our experiments, we used hydrochloric acid, but we could also have used sulfuric acid. The chemical formula for sulfuric acid is H2SO4. Let's try to write an equation for zinc reacting with sulfuric acid together. Our reactants are zinc plus sulfuric acid. Can you see from our reactants that hydrogen gas will be released during the reaction? So we know that hydrogen gas is one of the products. We also know that a metal salt is formed with what is left of the reactants. In this case, zinc and SO4. So our equation is zinc plus sulfuric acid react to form zinc sulfate and hydrogen gas. Can you see that this equation is already balanced? It is important that you remember the reaction pattern that we have discovered today. Here it is one more time. Metals react with acids to form metal salts and hydrogen gas. Before I leave you, I want you to think about this. What does the displacement reactions of metals and acid tell us about the reactivity of zinc, iron, copper and lead? I'm sure that you enjoyed today's lesson. See you next time when we will continue to talk about displacement reactions. Bye!